Xenos is a software package used to monitor servers, routers, printers and other network devices. In this screencast I'm going to show you how to install Xenos and how to configure it to monitor a client server using SNMP. The first step to installing Xenos is to obtain the Debian Xenos packages from xenos.com slash downloads. From this first downloads page you can either opt to fill out the form or click on the button above to skip the registration process and go directly to the downloads area. In the downloads area we're going to want to download the native stack, one of the native stack packages depending on whether you're using a 32-bit processor or a 64-bit 64 64-bit processor. Um, and for my virtual machines I'm using a 32-bit copy of Ubuntu. So I'm just going to copy that link location and then on my Xeno server here I'm going to use wget to download that package. Now because it's a large package and let's have a look at how big it is 108 megabytes. I've already downloaded it to save some time and now I'm going to install it using the d package minus minus install command Now Xenos is going to take a little while to install because as I said it is a big patch. So while that's doing that I'm just going to jump onto the client system that I have here and I'm going to install SNMP using apt get install SNMPD and it's going to install the SNMP daemon software which Xenos will use to monitor this server. So once the SNMP software is installed, we're going to need to navigate to the slash etc slash SNMP directory. And in here you'll find a file called snmpd.conf, um, which contains the default configuration Ubuntu gives SNMP. So I'm just actually going to move that file to snmpd.conf.bat. and create a new snmpd.com file. Now I've already created a configuration, a very basic configuration that will work with um, Xenos and I'll make that available on the the website. Save that. Um, the other thing that we also need to do is to navigate to the etc default directory and in here modify the snmpd file by default SNMP is only going to allow the local host to connect it's only listening on port for the local host so just by removing that last line of the SNMP D ops um, variable uh, if we remove that it's going to allow us to connect in from a machine other than just the, the client machine that we're on um, after doing that I'm just going to restart the SMMP daemon and that should be our client configured so if we go back to our server now hopefully that's finished installing it certainly looks like it has and now I'm going to start the Xeno stack software with slash etc init.d Xeno stack start Um, just as it takes a long time to download and a long time to install it also seems to take a little while to, to start as well so you can see it's starting various daemons here um, which are well worth learning if you read through the Xenos documentation available on xenos.com uh, you'll be able to find out what each of these does some of them are a little obvious Zen Ping, Zen Traps obviously use for SNMP, Zen Modeler to do um, to define machines the add to Zen. So now that that's started we can fire up our web browser and point it to our Xeno server. Um, on my particular test network here I've used an IP address of 172.16.1.1 but the important thing to note is it doesn't actually listen on port 80 it will listen on port 8080 default. Um, with an initial instant 
installation of Zen, the username will always be admin and the password is Xenos. So now that we have Xenos installed and you can see we're in the main screen here, what I'm going to want to do is add our, our client server which is on the IP address 172.16.1.2 and I'm going to tell it that this particular device we're monitoring is a Linux server. So it's quite important to pick the right path under here because this is how Xenos knows what sort of things it should be looking for. So for example if I select a Linux server it's going to monitor things such as disk space and um, CPU utilization. If I selected for example um, a printer it would monitor things such as page count and how much toner so it's important to select the right thing under there um, now by I'm looking just going to miss the other options that are available in there um, by adding the device what it's doing here is probing the device and it'll actually find that we have SNMP listening on that server so hopefully it should pick up on that and now that it's gone through and done its thing we should be able to click to the navigate button there so we can see straight away from our configuration file that um, we put in for SNMP on the client system it's picked up that I'm the contact, it's printed up, picked up the location of the server and also a few other bits and pieces such as the output you get from running a uname on that server um, so the, the kernel version everything's in there um, it will take a while for some of these these options to update but we can already see under here it's m now monitoring the network interfaces on that machine um, and the subnets that are associated with that and also disk utilization which it hasn't actually gone through and found how many bytes are free and used yet but it has picked up that there's a hard drive there which has a capacity of 7.5 gig um, under the hardware tab again not a lot in here just yet but we've got the um, CPU type but one of the nicest things and certainly something that Nagios doesn't have built in out of the box is um, the ability to and again it hasn't actually picked up on all these yet because we've only just added it but certainly over time it'll come up with graphing for your load average, CPU util utilization, memory utilization and disk IO Um, if we go back to the, the dashboard here now, we can see um, it's a few lists. And what I'm just going to do is just go to this object watch and tell it that I want it to watch objects under the devices Linux category. Perhaps I'll try that again. sorry, devices server Linux and so that's going to monitor our client now it's just throw an event here basically saying it's discovered the device and if my browser was yeah, forget about doing that browser's too small for the screencast so we can see here it's already picked up a bit more information, the OS version's showing up in there now. Um, hopefully under the performance we might actually have a bit more performance data. No, it hasn't shown up yet. So well, hopefully this has given you a bit of insight into um, how to very quickly set up and get Xenos installed and running and also how to configure um, your Linux servers so that Xenos can monitor them. Um, Xenos provides a whole range of other things that I'm not going to go into just now um, such as auto device discovery where if you plug uh, an SMP enabled device onto your network whether it be a Linux server or a Cisco router it'll actually pick those up as they come onto the network and you'll see them appear under your um, dashboard here in the discovered devices section where you can then go in and, and categorize them. Thanks for watching.